Hey everyone, welcome back to Deep's Media, I'm Deep. So I was thinking about this, I'm a pet lover, a dog lover, and perhaps you are as well. Do you remember the time where you maybe you went to the pet store and you saw the puppies running around and you picked up the one you wanted? Um, or maybe you've had the opportunity to actually go to a breeder and you had them all running around and you picked out, maybe it was the runt, the smallest of the litter, or the one that came running to you first and you just picked it up and you knew this is the one I have to have, or, or maybe you're somebody who went the adoption route, kudos to you, and adopted a, a dog in need. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case is, and hopefully you're not somebody who just walking down the street put a leash on a random dog and took him home. That's not, that's not nice. Call the phone number on the tag and return the dog. But whatever it is, you have those feelings of attachment. Now you've got the dog home and you've raised it. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. How many of us actually really know the reason our dog breed that we picked was bred? What was the original intent of breeding that dog and, and what was it quote unquote made for? Now, specifically, I'm not talking about cuddling or throwing the ball or even getting a beer out of the fridge. While those are all fantastic reasons and things that you've taught your dogs, I'm talking about the real reason these dogs are bred. For example, the Dash Hound or Dachshund or however you pronounce it. Did you know it was originally bred to hunt badgers? Low to the ground, sleek, was bred to be able to get into the burrows and pull those badgers out. Who would have thought, right? The Bulldog, it was bred for bull baiting purposes, specifically to agitate a bull and simply done for sporting purposes. That was it. The Beagle. It was bred to hunt rabbits. Basically, we're talking about the Elmer Fudd of the dog world. The Labrador, we know it as a bird dog. It was bred specifically to retrieve ducks. Now, this one's surprising, the Poodle. While it looks crazy, bougie as anything, it was originally bred to go into the water to retrieve birds and ducks, right? Who would have thought? It's got the fanciest looking hairstyle to do that. The Rottweiler. Now this one's not as shocking. It's a very aggressive looking dog and that's what it was bred for. It was bred to basically control aggressive livestock as the farmer went to the market. Now it was also bred to protect the farmer on the way to the market as well from theft of that livestock. So with all the dogs out there in the world and all the choices that we have, I picked one that's pretty unique. In fact, the vet in our local city that's been around for many, many decades said until I brought mine in about a month or two ago, it was the first time they had ever seen that breed. So I'm here to introduce to you the Dogo Argentina. All right, so before I introduce you to my Dogo Argentino, let me tell you a little history about the breed. It was back in 1928, and it had been some years at this point, Dr. Antonio Norris Martinez started breeding the Dogo Argentino. Now his goal was to breed a, and create a dog that was basically the Iron Man of dogs, something that could help him control the wild boar and puma problem on the farm. So he had a dog and he started to create a new breed using 10 other breeds of dogs. Now the goal here was to highlight the best traits from each one of those breeds and remove the imperfections of each one at the same time. So you can imagine this took many, many years. His project kind of finished out um, after his lifespan, but basically where he started was taking 10 breeds, things like the Pointer for scent tracking, Great Dane for stature and size and for height. The Bull Terrier was bred in for the coat color, um, as well as the eye patch that you'll see on some Dogo Argentinos. Um, the Pyrenean Mastiff, kind of the Great Pyrenees, if you will, was also bred for the coat color, all white, and also his characteristic of being a very calm breed. 
Um, the boxer was bred in for tracking and agility, and of course the bulldog for its strong jaw and aggressiveness. So this and some other breeds uh, mixed together created what he formed a breed standard as the Dogo Argentino. Um, the biggest thing that you'll find with this breed is loyalty. Um, they are somewhat robotic, but very, very loyal um, to who they perceive to be the alpha male. Um, now that alpha male or female characteristic um, is also bred into the dog itself in that in a pack, it will quickly identify itself to be the strongest point and ensure that everyone else kind of follows suit. Now, once the breed was developed and started being utilized more and more in Argentina, it eventually made its way over to North America. Now, the direct bloodline back to the farm is really what you're looking for when you're trying to buy one of these animals. Um, AKC just registered it as an official breed in what is qualified as a purebred um, not too long ago. So it's a relatively new breed. You don't see many of them and you'll want to use extreme caution when you're trying to pick out where to buy this from or, or whether you're adopting. Now, my, I myself, I called um, four breeders in North America that I found. They're predominantly the four most popular breeders. Two hung up on me uh, when I told them I had kids. Uh, the third I hung up on when they asked me um, if I was ever scared of a dog I owned. And I said, to what extent? What are you talking about? Are you scared of ever being offed by one of the dogs that you own? That was good enough. The fourth breeder and the one I went with actually said to me that this is one of the most caring and loyal breeds that she's ever experienced and had ever come across. Sold. I wanted the puppy from her. She said she had one male left and it was actually one that had been raised to the current 13 weeks um, with her grandchildren. So that dog actually lived with about 13 grandkids and she was intending on keeping it for herself. Well, I told her I wanted a male. I didn't want what is fairly common with the breed, which is to crop the ears. I didn't want cropped ears. Um, I had had a dog back in the day, a miniature schnauzer with cropped ears, and to me they felt like they were always irritated, so I didn't want cropped ears. So convincingly she said fine, she would keep the female that she was actually looking to sell and give me the male. So off from San Diego, California to Virginia came Bentley, and let me introduce you to Bentley. Bentley was born in 2017 and is easily the most caring, loyal, and I'd say robotic or smartest dog I've ever owned. Um, we have three kids and there's never been an incident where uh, we feared for any sort of interaction. Now we don't leave him alone with the youngest one, um, nor have we ever left him alone with a small child just because it's smart not to fully trust dogs. Um, anyone that does that, you, you put yourself at risk when something happens, it's always a shock to everybody, but you know, be smart. All right, so Bentley is unique in the, in the sense that he doesn't really use command words. Um, he's gotten to the point where he's learned basically sentences. So for example, if we are simply talking among ourselves and not even to him and we reference that we're going to watch a movie or watching a movie he knows that we're going to be making our way upstairs to the theater where he's not really allowed to be not allowed to be on that floor anyways so he doesn't go up there unless we're watching a movie so he picks up on that word in that sentence and knows eventually th some point through the night we're going to be making our way upstairs if we tell him to go lie in his bed, he'll go and do it. At the end of the night, we'll tell him 
go ahead and go lie in your bed. Now, if he's going to sleep in my daughter's bed, I can say, go ahead and go lie in her bed and, you know, her name. And he knows where he's going. Now we can put two things together and we can tell him to go drink his water first and then go lie in bed and he'll go drink his water and then go lie in bed. Cool. Every Friday we order from Uber Eats. You simply look on the app, talk about what everybody wants to order, place the order. Lo and behold, within about five minutes, you'll see Bentley facing the door in the hall. And it's kind of like he knows an Uber Eats driver is going to show up when we didn't say the word Uber. We just simply talked about what we were in order that evening. Now, that could be a Friday night, a Saturday night, or a Tuesday night, but he somehow knows that what we're talking about equates to somebody's going to eventually come to the door. Pretty cool, I think, because you can simply talk to your dog like he's a part of the family and not really have to throw command words out there like he's a dog. So the characteristics that I see in Bentley that are very common to the breed, um, he does take very aggressive stances at some point where somebody rings the bell and he doesn't know who it is or he's agitated. Um, he will sit and posture in a very aggressive manner and you can see kind of his abs and I posted a picture of that, but um, he's very intimidating looking. Now, it could be in the middle of the night and the house alarm goes off and it's almost impossible to wake Bentley up. It's just give or take with what mood he's in and whether or not he's going to play defender or just keep sleeping. Um, other things, when he stands, he'll stand with a posture that's very show dog-esque um, of the breed and, and uh, in a very perfect posture, actually. So I can see how that breed and her breed specifically, her dogs are winning shows. Um, things that I see in Bentley that are not so common uh, to the breed, perhaps. Um, very common with the dogs that I've seen in his lineage, but maybe not so common to every Dogo Argentino. Um, he's a very, very loving animal to pretty much everybody. So once he identifies family, whether it's my mom's dog that comes over or, you know, our cousins or whoever it is, other kids, uh, neighbors um, that aren't scared of dogs. Uh, once he identifies that there is calmness and everything is okay, he's a very loving animal. And the only thing he really wants is pets. And he won't leave you alone until you pet him. And then once you start petting him, he won't leave you alone until you leave. So, um, that's Bentley. Bentley is an indoor dog, so living with a 130 pound dog is very interesting. Um, it's basically living with a huge, to us, it's like a huge puma cat that walks around the house. And um, when he has his little zoomies, it's not little zoomies, he destroys furniture and can bump into a chair and knock it down or a Christmas tree or whatever's in his way or a human. Um, but essentially he moves slow, um, hopefully knock on wood he'll live a very long and happy life being inside out of the elements um he is fully house trained um, in using the bathroom outside and can be left alone with absolutely no harm of doing damage the worst thing he does will jump on the bed and he'll go to sleep on our bed if we're not home <clears throat> but that's about it um, other than that he won't grab food off the counter or anything like that um, he seems to kind of want to do that when we're home, and yet when we're away, he doesn't, so whatever. Um, but that's about it. Um, I would say 100% recommend this breed if you're looking for the big dog, giant dog breed. Uh, his food is expensive. Um, you buying 33 pound bags of food every month. Um, other than that, he lives, he sleeps on a, it's a dog bed, but essentially looks like a single bed mattress. Um, but a very loyal dog, um, a very calm dog. They run outside a little bit. It's not a, a dog that needs constant, constant running and exercise. Um, if you're going to leave him outside, just be ready for him to bark 
a lot to protect your home. Um, safe around kids as long as they're introduced early and overall a very highly recommended breed. So hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely hit the subscribe button down in the corner. Hit like, share this with anyone and everyone who's a dog lover or anyone that might be thinking of purchasing a large, large dog. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.